Welcome to Chat Tsunami. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Chat Tsunami. I'm Chat Tsunami and today I am joined by the amazing, the fantastic, the absolutely brilliant, you won't believe who I've got in this show today, the... Oh, uh, sorry, one second. Um, just getting a phone call. Sorry, one sec. Mhm. Mhm. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I'll tell him. Uh, sorry, Adam. That was the uh, producer for Chat Tsunami saying we don't have enough of a budget to actually hype you up today. So yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna have to quickly say, yep, here's Adam. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I was getting Over. so pumped there. I was getting so pumped and also nervous. I was like, no, don't pick me up. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, no, I can't handle the pressure. Keanu, you can go home now. Uh, it's okay, it's okay. He, he, he's gone home. Uh, uh, that's fine. No one will be yelling breathtaking around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> what so- makes a criminal? <laughs> Oh god, let's not get into that. <laughs> oh. So yeah, as you can tell by that very, very subtle introduction, yeah, today we are talking about hype in particular in relation to, yeah, video games in general. Yeah, before we dive into like our, you know, key examples, Adam, what do we mean when we're talking about hype? What would you say? Well, I'll go. I'll go straight to the dictionary definition of hype, which is extravagant or intensive publicity or promotion. So that idea of trying to create like a storm of like interest and um, and excitement uh, for for your new video game is the best description. And I mean, even when we were younger, would you say like when we were younger, hype was not worse as in it was bad, but like there was a lot more hype when we were younger. In playing video games than it is nowadays, or do you think um, it's just gotten worse as the year has gone? I on? think it's gotten worse. To be honest, I think like, really? do you know, it might be the way of it. It might be that I'm more kind of clued in now, and that like yeah. rather when I was younger, I wasn't really always following, mm-hmm. you know, like video game things. So there might have been a lot of, and I'm like obviously there were hype games. Like you know, I can I can remember like big releases from back when I was a kid and a teenager and everything. Perhaps it's just now that I'm more like, you know, I, I look more news kind of video game mm-hmm. news items. That I see more of this hype, but I don't know. To me, it feels like the hype the hype train is now like, it's now just like nobody's at the helm of it. You know, yeah. it's just mm-hmm. it's, the engine's on full. Nobody's steering it. <laughs> you know, it's going to it's gonna fly or it's going to it's gonna plummet so mm. <laughs> i don't know i just get the feeling now it, it's out of control yeah i think that's one of the curses of like growing up and going into adulthood isn't it where <laughs> yeah. you kind of think oh no um you, you notice like the kind of subtle things where you know you buy a packet of like shreddies or cornflakes or whatever and you see like this random fort not that you do really but you know what i mean you see like a random character from a video game on it and it's like oh no what the <laughs> What is going on? And then, yeah, it's just that whole idea of, I, I suppose, just trying to bombard the public, isn't it? It's trying to bombard them with as much information as possible about their game. I mean, not all companies do it. Like, I have seen some game companies just kind of slowly be like, oh, here, here's a video game. And you're like, I had no idea this was a thing. That's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, but you always get sus- you get suspicious of that, you know, mm-hmm. because uh, there's been some really bad games that companies have just like let out, like the like just yeah. the day before, like oh, and here we go, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, go go, and then it's like stuck in cover because it's absolute <laughs> crap. But like I don't know, like for me, I'm still seeing, I still see buses around where I live that have that have cyberpunk advertising on them, you know, and I I, I can't recall as a kid seeing like video game advertising that, but I'm sure there were some. Mm-hmm. But I can't ever recall that kind of, you know, visible advertising that wasn't in like a gaming magazine or maybe you'd see like an a- occasional advert on TV. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like now, as I said, you can go to like a bus stop and I'd see like a big poster for the new- next Call of Duty, mm-hmm. Cyberpunk, whatever. Yeah. I thought, I suppose you have to think of it like in the sense that the gaming landscape has changed since we were mm-hmm. younger. That's true. Like, I always remember going back to, like, uh, I can't remember what it was from. I think it was from, like, a newspaper. And it's one of these, you know, like, satire comics where it's this um, couple who are watching their son play video games. They're thinking about, like, how this is going to be good for this future. Because <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's, Inside the thought bubble, there's like a picture of a newspaper and it's got, like, circled, wanted Nintendo player. 
pro only, <laughs> that kind of thing. And like back then, you wouldn't really have thought that gaming would be where it is now. No, no. If you know what I mean. Like when we were growing up, it was just like. I mean, it still is a pastime and all of this, but nowadays, like, people make genuine careers and things out of yeah. it. So it's like, it's totally changed. But I feel as if with that also comes this kind of over-saturation. I mean, would you agree with that? There's, like, just so many games that are out now with all different genres and things like that. You know, they're kind of competing to get the attention or that kind of spotlight. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's such a bigger industry now as well than, mm-hmm. than what it was in the in the 90s and early 2000s when, when we were when we were growing up so yeah and as you say like there's so many more i mean there's probably more video game companies now i mean i'm i don't know that for a fact i'm just gonna guess there are yeah. uh, the, certainly they're they're much bigger like you know mm-hmm. the ones that the giants are far far bigger than they ever like were when, when we were when we were growing up and stuff and there's so much money tied into it mm-hmm. and so many investors and you know backers and everything that mm-hmm. yeah like it's just they have more resources. That's why I think hype has increased now because it's just more resources. People have more money to throw at these things, you know. And mm-hmm. there's more. In, there's like I said, there's obviously everybody's always wanted their games to sell, but now especially with kind of corporate backers and everything, like it's, it is really the bottom line. Everybody wants their product to sell, so that's why they they saturate it. Also, kind of going back to one of the topics we spoke a couple of weeks ago about, it's like banking on a lot of good faith with certain properties. Like, oh, yeah. in terms of nostalgia and looking at characters that already have a strong presence. Like, for example, one of the ones you might see on the screen, of course, is Mega Man. Well, it's not Mega Man on the screen, but <laughs> the goodwill from Mega Man, which resulted in that game that we're going to talk about. <laughs> later you know and it's the same with like mario sonic and um, call of duty as well uh halo y- you know like just think of any like popular you know mascot or gaming franchise fifa maybe you know things yeah. like that and that is kind of what they bank on like i think i said this a couple of weeks ago in regards to call of duty where it was like <laughs> i always remember this where they were like oh we've got boots on the ground now and that Your was the phrase yeah, I I love that phrase. Um, so yeah, that was referring to when Call of Duty went through like a space shooter phase. You know, it's like, Mom, it's not a phase, it's who I am. <laughs> you know, went from World War II to modern <laughs> shooter to futuristic shooter. And then what the hell happened? It just it went straight to space when like Titanfall <laughs> and all of those shooters were coming out. And then it fell down to Earth again to, and I quote, boots on the ground and yeah that was supposed to be the calling card of oh i'm gonna get you hyped and it's like wow just (laughs) it's like a description for walking wow that that has got me hyped for (laughs) for this game cannot wait (laughs) just can you imagine that for any other game (laughs) i mean yeah it's it's difficult it's difficult to imagine Mm -hmm. but like i'm sure there must be there must be the same kind of buzz words and like catchphrases that are mm-hmm. used for different types of game. I don't know what the the translation of like mm-hmm. you know the the translation of boots on ground would be for those other ones, but I have to imagine there must be like you know there must be those like phrases that if you're a fan of those games, you're like oh my god, if I hear this like one more mm-hmm. time. I mean, I suppose it's like, and I know I talk about Sonic a lot, but it's like if you said oh we're going back to pixel art, and it's like wait what. <laughs> you, you know, it almost Wait feels as if they're like regressing rather than yeah. innovating. For I, I don't know. It's just as a weird kind of mindset to have. But the more, as we said, like the more time marches on, as I was talking to you about like earlier before we came on stream. <laughs> um, yeah, the idea of hype, especially in regards to video games, is just and again, I know ironic. It's massive. If you look at like, when we were growing up, of course, it was kind of viewed in that social aspect. It was viewed as more of a hobby or if you want to, you know, if you want to play in the stereotypes, like a menace to society and all of this. <laughs> and, you know, some people still think that. Some people do. Yeah. But it's more when th- there was that kind of looking down on games. And nowadays, like, and when I say nowadays, I'm talking about, like, even mid like 2000s slash 2010s where you know you have celebrities like do you remember the adverts for black ops 2 when it came out oh they had like everybody in didn't they oh yeah jonah hill and like Mm -hmm. robert downey jr like Mm -hmm. everybody was in that 
Yeah, and it was just all these celebrities, which you think, like, a decade or two earlier, I mean, I don't know if they had so many celebrities, but I don't remember. I mean, they pro- they possibly could, but I mean, yeah, having all those celebrities at once and just being like, look at our game and hyping up how great it was, you know? And nowadays that's kind of commonplace, but see Cyberpunk, where yeah. you honestly can turn on the internet without the meme slapping you across the face yeah. saying you're breathtaking but, but at th- least Keanu Reeves was in that game yeah. at the very least like I don't think Jonah Hill was you know no. was in no. Black unless I don't know unless he did a voice or something but I don't ever recall him being a part of that um, but that was that was really a big phase of Call of Duty because mm-hmm. the the one after that Black Ops 2 was Ghosts and Ghost uh, basically tied itself to like Eminem released an album at the same time, oh and one no. of the songs I've forgotten which which one it is, but like one of the like the, the like the marquee tracks of that album yeah. was like tied to Ghost. It was used as like a theme tune, and like in the in the music vid- in Eminem's music video, there's like there's like Ghost plays in the background at points. I'm sure the music <laughs> video like it was so tied into it and everything, and yeah. um, it really was a phase. I'm sure Snoop Dogg was one of them as well. I can't remember if it was like a Modern Warfare or something. I'm but he sure. was like tied into that. It was that was that very it was that phase they really, really pushed the celebrity mm-hmm. involvement. Because I mean, I think it was Modern Warfare two that they had an Eminem song as well. Oh they um, did as well. Good yeah. point. Yeah. Much was surprised that they had him like back twice. No shade uh-huh. against Eminem, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's just as strange that they're like, Yeah, that, that went well. well. Let's bring him back. Do it again. You know? Yeah. And yeah, Snoop Dogg especially. I can't remember. I'm sure he's a voice. And one of them, but I can't is it remember. Modern Warfare Three, is it? It might be. Yeah, I'm sure I'm it's like, that one. I'm sure it was like DLC or something. Yeah, but I mean that's the thing though. It's weird as well because hype isn't just. So we're talking about like the kind of you know like the overt type of hype you know with companies putting in tons for advertisement for celebrities and things like that but i mean nowadays with the internet and i feel as if i'm so old saying that (laughs) nowadays with this newfangled thing called the interwebs you know it's amazing how word of mouth can kind of emphasize that or reinforce it look at a lot of the indie games nowadays like a lot of indie games probably well i'm probably i'm certain that they don't have as high a budget to kind of play with for advertising yeah so they have to rely on like word of mouth or and especially for things like kickstarters because how many kickstarters have we seen come and go over the years in gaming and saying oh we are the spiritual successor to that game you love that's you know. the other catchphrase. Spiritual successor <laughs> yeah. was the one, wasn't it? Like, oh, oh my god, everything was a spiritual successor to something. Oh god, I mean, there's so many to choose from. Like, there's um, well, Mighty Number no. Nine, which we are going to talk about later. Trust me, um, I didn't search Google for a PNG of that character for nothing. <laughs> um, well, we're not going to be talking about this one, but there was also a uh, ukulele, which was a yeah. spiritual successor, quote unquote, to Banjo Kazooie. And you know how much I love Banjo Kazooie. Like, I have a real soft spot for that game. And then they brought it out, and it was just like, you just read the stuff about it, and it was like, eh, like nine yeah. times out of ten, usually it's like a disappointment. That's the gamble you have to take, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's it like, is. are you going to buy into the hype or not? And Some I mean, of them have succeeded as well. Like, that Bloodstained did oh, pretty yeah. well, didn't it? Which was like the quote unquote spiritual successor to Castle, the old school Castlevania. Mm. That did quite well, from what I understand. It was actually a, a decent game mm. at the end. Thank God there's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, it feels as if, like, maybe it's just the stereotype of these kind of games where it's like, oh no. <laughs> you hear Kickstarter, you hear spiritual successor. It's like a starter pack for disappointment almost. And you're like, oh please, just please work and just don't. <laughs> Please don't steal the money and escape to like South America or something. <laughs> it's like, do you not find like a more maybe it's just me, maybe it's just me mm. and I'm just a screwed up person, but it's not like a morbid fascination with just watching, especially if it's like a game oh, that you're yeah. not that mm-hmm. interested in. It's just more of a fascination with just watching, being like, is it gonna fail? Mm-hmm. You know, it's that way. Like if you watch like a car rolling down a hill and it's like there's like an electrical store at the bottom, you're like, mm-hmm. is it gonna crash through? And like you know, <laughs> is that kind of morbid fascination just watching it, like almost wanting it to fail? Yeah, no, I'm the same. Like. I mean, I don't wish any ill will against, you know, a game, but when yeah. you actually see it, like, this is kind of the basics of media, though, isn't it? It's like a bad, yeah. like a tragedy sells more than a game that succeeds, really. 
Or yeah. not a game, but just if something succeeds and you're kind of like, oh, well, all's well that ends well. But, you know, if it's like a game that's like broken at launch, you're like, right, where's the popcorn? Let's get that internet historian video <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, he does some, he honestly does some he amazing does some work. Because he did a lot of good, like, retrospects for a lot of these games. Like, one of the ones, it's kind of funny you brought that up, like, about kind of having that fascination. Because... And I'm going to be honest here, I am not a huge fan of Fallout. I don't know yeah. why, though, because I tried it, but I, I don't know, I just couldn't get into it. And that's kind of triggered another um, phrase in my head where it's like, you know when people say it's X game with Y. So, for example, yeah. when people were describing Fallout, they were saying it's Skyrim with guns. And it's like, no, it's Fallout. With Fallout yeah. stuff, yeah. you're your own thing. Don't <laughs> don't use your brother as a crutch. It's like, get yeah. out of there. It's this weird mentality or this kind of, I don't know, this kind of like fear almost <laughs> of like standing on your own. But it's like in kind of a desperate attempt to build this hype. They're going to say, oh, it's like that thing you love. Like, you know, the old Spice adverts. Yeah. There's like, what's this? I have two tickets to that thing you love. You know, it's like that. It's like, what's this? It's a game exactly the same as the game you love. And it's like, no, it isn't. Don't lie to me. Equivalent of Old Spice Man in video games. Don't lie to me. You know? And yeah, when it came to like Fallout 76, like I bought Fallout 4. I I will admit, I bought Fallout 4. I think I got past like the first couple of levels and then I was just like, well, not levels, but you know what I mean. First couple of missions. Yeah, missions. And then, yeah, like I got the power armor and everything, so it was relatively early on. And then after that, I just got bored and I was like, this isn't for me. So, like, I dropped it. And then they announced that Fallout 76 was coming out and I was like, "Mm, (laughs) nah, nah. I mean, I wasn't, like, thinking of getting it, but then I just heard the horror stories, and, yeah. my God, there is... That that game is, like, a beautiful mess at launch. That was just absolutely yeah, ridiculous. Was... Like, between the bugs and the, you know, the leaking personal information of people, borderline scamming people, which yeah. I kind of thought... Now that is that that is bad. That is not good at all. But yeah, just all of this. Like, if you want to like get like a full comprehensive like understanding of it, watch um, Internet Historian's video on it. It is it is so good, it's doesn't it? Doozy. It's a doozy. Yeah, it is so entertaining, and it sums up like every single problem with the game. And it's just that idea that you're watching this video, as you said, with a game that personally I have no interest in, but. You're watching the game or the video thinking, huh, that, that is actually interesting why, you know, it failed. Like if someone said, oh yeah, it came out to a resounding success, everyone was happy about the rum bottle that was actually a plastic case <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, or the canvas bag that was actually Friggin like... Yeah, nylon bag. Yeah, <laughs> nylon. Oh, it's so funny. Just even if you read about it, you're just like, this can't be real. And this is like from a big, you know, like company like Bethesda. This isn't like... Like, you know, small potatoes with them. Um, you know, it's not an indie company, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> it's just as you. But I mean, yeah, there's just so many examples, isn't there? Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot. Like, companies building hype and whether or not it pays off. So, like, for example, you've got, like, The Witcher 3. That game was hyped to hell. In fact, that is quite interesting because two of the examples that we talked about earlier with um, Fallout 76. Um, where that was a game that was hyped to hell and it just bombed completely. Yeah. But the you could say the opposite happened to Skyrim, which is one we're going to talk about later. But, you know, that was hyped to hell and that succeeded because of the hype. And I mean, it's the same with like The Witcher, the one before it, you know, it's the game before Cyberpunk. Yeah. And The Witcher was like critically acclaimed, it was hyped. I actually had no idea about The Witcher really until people started talking about it through this me, game. Me too. Yeah. I, I think as well, I think actually the hype for The Witcher mm-hmm. like actually grew after the game came out. Like I, that's when I started to hear about it. It was actually after the game release and people were going mental about it and it was like being proclaimed like the best game of all time, you know, yeah. and everything. So I think it was one where the hype was big to start with, but then it just kept going. You know, oh, yeah. and like it's still it still goes now. 
Mm-hmm. It's part of the reason I'm put off playing it because people talk about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. No, it's true. Because I mean, there is there's loads of um, critical acclaim for it. It's still considered one of the best games of like all time. I mean, yeah. if you even look at like Skyrim, it's like both of those games are considered classic so much so that even today they're still getting ported onto your you know whether you have like a smart fridge or a smart toaster you know they're still getting ported onto them and you're like what the actual hell guys <laughs> what the hell <laughs> it's just as weird um but that shows how the hype kind of paid off whereas oh god yeah whereas <laughs> with cyberpunk especially um that just that was hype to hell and that was another game and i'm not trying to sound like a contrarian but i genuinely had no interest in it and not in a bad way. I don't want to be like, oh, I had no interest in that childish game. Like, genuinely. Like, I had no idea what it was about. And then when I heard about it, I was like, eh, it's, it looks okay. But yeah, when it actually came out, it was that grab your popcorn moment, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, I was like different. I was very, very excited for it. It's weird because I, I played The Witcher 2. I never I played a little bit of The Witcher 3, but I didn't really grab. Mm-hmm. But I was really, really, I was really, really excited for Cyberpunk. Mm-hmm. when it was announced and stuff and i was really on into it and i was like couldn't wait mm-hmm. but then it felt like such a long time that like by the time it started to come out i was like oh yeah cyberpunk's coming out and i was like oh that'll be good and exciting mm-hmm. and, stuff. and then i don't know it just kind of naturally i just seemed to like be like just lose interest you know i was like oh cyberpunk's out and then and then like just as you say like <laughs> the disaster that was its release happened and i was like yeah and then i was like i read more and more about it and i was like you know what i'm, I'm never gonna get this game yeah. Like I just I'd lost any interest, like you know. But I I was initially like probably on that hype train and very very excited for it. I'm not gonna like backtrack and be like as soon as it came out, it was like oh I'm gonna get it. But I was a bit curious mm-hmm. because I mean with like Keanu Reeves and everything, all the memes, all this and that coming out about it, it was like okay maybe there is something here. But then I saw all the glitches and things, and I thought yeah no. And the whole like optimization thing, and yeah, that that is an example where just hype killed that game completely. Yeah. They promised the world, and they were hyped from a previous entry with The Witcher, and they thought, you know, oh, it's it's not gonna, <laughs> it's not gonna kill off their reputation. I suppose that's what they thought, and yeah, the, the yeah. spoilers that kind of did. Not personally against, like, you know, the developers themselves, but, you know, whatever kind of corporate shenanigans went on in the background, either way, it's, like, killed the game, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it may make a comeback. I mean, you, d- you don't want to say, like, you know, you don't want to say never. I think it, it's been it's too soon, and they are, they are oh, yeah. still doing work. So, you know, it could, it mm. could make a, you know, one of the games we're going to talk about has mm. made a very drastic, like, you know, comeback. Mm. Um, so it's, it's possible. It's possible for it to come back. Like it just, mm-hmm. it just really. I don't know. We'll just have to see. Some of things have to see, but it's. it's but at the minute, it still qualifies as a disaster. Yeah. I think. <laughs> you know. I mean, I'm not being funny, but when a when a game as popular as that needs like a roadmap for a full year before it reaches any DLC. Yeah. yeah kind of alarm bells there, but yeah, that that's a chat tsunami for another day when we actually <laughs> buy the game and be like, oh, this is actually really good. <laughs> <laughs> years later so yeah that brings us like on to really the main part of this um episode so basically we have chosen three games yeah just basically what we think of with a game that has lived up to the hype a game that has failed to live up to the hype but has kind of worked its way and came back again and the third example is one that's completely yeah it was hyped up and it was just dead on arrival when it came out so let's start on a positive note because goodness knows we're going to need it after we talk about the other two (laughs) so yeah the first one we've got is skyrim which i have to admit i was not like big into you know like oblivion and morrowind just Mm -hmm. the elder scrolls series in general like i'd seen other people play it and talk about it but I hadn't really played it until people started hyping up Skyrim, saying how amazing it was, and then I kind of, like, you know, like, I kind of chomped down on the bait and thought, okay, fine, I'll try it out, and I absolutely loved it. But what about you, though? Like, did you kind of buy into the hype at the time? I, I definitely did, because I, I got Skyrim, probably not on release, but not long mm. after release, certainly. But it's funny, because I'd played Oblivion, I played a bit of Oblivion, and I'd, mm-hmm. I'd enjoyed the... Cause I only played, like, the first kind of bit of it. And I enjoyed that, but I reached, like, a 
really combat heavy segment and it was just i just found it impossible uh, i just gave i gave up with the game there so i didn't really delve mm-hmm. into oblivion much i played a bit of fallout 3 but i'm like you i don't really have that much fondness for the fallout series mm-hmm. um so like it's weird that I, I don't really know from that like i had no real attachment to bethesda game so i don't know quite why yeah. i don't know i think i just like the setting and i I, mm-hmm. I think i was intrigued and i, I do there's something about a fantasy setting that can sometimes like you know some fantasy fantasy settings i get quite excited from. i'm like oh that sounds really cool mm-hmm. i think i just liked what i saw about the game and i think it had some really good like marketing and some really good trailers mm-hmm. that kind of brought up excitement and the world looked really cool so i did like i, I was actually very excited for it i said i got it pretty not long after release i'm actually trying to remember when i got it because as i said like i think i might have got it like a couple of months after it was released like in fact no it might have been later but it was like when I got it, like, I think I got it for relatively cheap, so I wasn't, you, you know, like, I wasn't scorned yeah. if it was going to be bad or anything, but when I got it, I was like, okay, this is interesting. You know, it wasn't really my type of game, because I think at that time I was kind of going through, a, I think, like, the tail end of my FPS phase. Because, yeah, I was getting into, like, Call of Duty, um, Halo, especially, with, um, like, Reach and things. Yeah, it, it was interesting, but, like, it was a, it was something different. You know, mm. it, it was something fresh and the idea that you could create your own character and play it as you wanted to play it. And don't get me wrong, the game is filled with like bugs, glitches and all of that. But it wasn't, for the most part anyway, it wasn't that bad or it didn't like break the game as much. For the most part, yeah. For the most think... part, yeah. Like there were a couple, but not not enough to kind of break the experience for you. I think as well, like, I think that was a period as well where we kind of, this was obviously pre-Fallout yeah. 76, so we kind of had accepted that Bethesda games were buggy, <laughs> you know, it was oh, just yeah. part of it, you were like, you were like, you took it, you just took it, like, it was like the salt you took with, like, you know, your your uh, your sugar mm-hmm. and stuff, you know, you 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 just accepted that for they, 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 mm-hmm. these games had great scope and scale to them, and there was some great, like, you know, you could really get invested in it, but you, mm-hmm. you had to deal with the bugs, and you're like, okay, fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll, it was... I'll eat my vegetables to have the taste of <laughs> I was going to say, it's kind of ironic though, isn't it, that they used to say that modders would fix all the issues in Bethesda <laughs> games. For some reason, Bethesda took that as like a badge of honour and leaned more into modders and things. Yeah. To the extent that when Fallout 4 and um, 76 came out, they were actually getting people to pay for more mods mm. and you're just like uh, <laughs> you're yeah like, mm, this isn't this isn't good and it's like you're supposed to be a professional company you shouldn't be depending on mods to be a good game don't get me wrong yeah. mods do help increase a game's life i mean god knows how many times i've played through skyrim with mods a notable shout out of course being the fancy mud crab mod absolutely love that it's literally you get a mud crab and they just slap like a top hat and a monocle on them and nice. Honestly, I couldn't play through it <laughs> without having that mod on because yeah, it was like, yeah, because it's like they just, you know, they just did not look the same <laughs> after that. Like as soon as you saw them, it's like where, <laughs> it's like where's your top hat, sir? And they're just, you know, <laughs> they're just garbling because you know <laughs> they're mud crabs. They're not, they're, they're not really the. I don't want to say bell of the ball, but you know what I mean. They're not really sociable creatures in that game. Yeah, <laughs> they just sit down. The modding community, I think, explains a lot of like Skyrim's longevity. Is oh, that yeah. it had such an active community, and it, it, as you say, it gave this game, it gave the game like the game was already quite replayable, but it gave it this oh, yeah. like the added level of replayability. So I think that's what really helped. Like you know, I think I also like sustained the hype past like release and everything, mm-hmm. and people got excited about these new mods and it said like maybe people want to come back and play it. Yeah, because it does have, like, a kind of surplus of hype, doesn't it? Yeah, With, um, definitely, yeah. You know, I mean, even today, as I was saying at the beginning, even today it's, like, been released for, I mean, every single system, hasn't it? Yeah, but pretty much, basically, <laughs> under the sun, you know. Yeah, I mean, you've got PC, Xbox, PlayStation, the Switch now, you know. Yep. And, you know, my terrible language journeys, which I'll... I'll explain one day, I think, (laughs) Um, with that game, but it's an example of a game that definitely lived up to the hype and it kind of utilised it really well to kind of, not promote itself, but like carve itself into gaming, how to put it, not like history, well history, yeah, that's probably the right word, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, popularity, but yeah. Cringy as this will sound. It's like, you know you get those really bad pictures online of yeah. like, I'm a gamer, I have many lives. And for some <laughs> reason, there's always the Dover King, the main character in Skyrim, <laughs> like just in the corner of that, next to like the dude from Battlefield. And like, <laughs> I don't know, like Kratos from God of War and things like that. And it just kind of shows you like, because they're so that game's so popular that they consider that to be one of the examples of them showing themselves off as being, you know, being a gamer and being part of this kind of community. So it's definitely one that has, yeah, it's one that succeeded with the hype. I think. I, I th- oh yeah, I think as well. It actually makes a really interesting comparison to the next two games we're going to talk about, just in terms of its like pre-release hype. Uh, just, just I'll just briefly, briefly say like, because if you look at the ad campaign for Skyrim, what it was, what it was quite clever was it was quite light on details, mm-hmm. um, but it actually what it really did was it really pushed like the kind of gravity and and the scale of the game and made it this big sort of event, mm-hmm. and you know like it kind of every, it was telling kind of implicitly people like this is a big deal, and mm-hmm. people kind of bought into that, and so everybody was really excited about like oh can't wait to explore Skyrim and this world you know and do all this stuff rather than being like oh I really can't you know wait for this specific feature. You know, which I think our other two games got a little bit caught up in that, which, you know, kind of had bad effects for them. And as well, I think the fact that it had a big company behind it who have experience mm-hmm. of promoting Bethesda, yeah. but are, you know, are, were, they're old hands now as well. Well, maybe you wouldn't think so from, from 76, but they were sort of, you know, they, they were kind of old hands at doing this and, and knew kind of what to do. Mm-hmm. And so they benefited from that. And also they had a lot of resources behind it, you know, and everything they could make mm-hmm. a very effective marketing campaign. Whereas our other, our other examples were from, you know, smaller, smaller teams and smaller mm-hmm. studios with less experience, and I think that really showed. It's just kind of going back to what you were saying about like they didn't emphasize the, you know, they didn't emphasize like any mechanics. As yeah. you were saying, it was kind of more to do with the how do you put it, like more to do with the story and the experience. Because I remember one prominent um, trailer where it was the. Well, the main character, the Dover King, the Dragon Slayer, if you will, who ended up... It was like a live-action trailer, wasn't it? You was it a live-action? I'm sure it was a live-action. There, there was two of them. There was the one where it was on the cliff, remember? That was a and, pre-rendered one, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, yeah, and he does yeah. the first row down, and he goes, Bleh, and, you know, it goes through all of Tamriel, or not Tamriel, but it goes through all of Skyrim, and, yeah. you know, what you can do in there. And that's another that's example. That, that's still one of the yeah. best video game trailers, I think, of yeah. all time. And his name is Dover King. And you know, it's the swell of music and you're just like, oh, so, so cool. But there was, I'm sure there was a live action, and I could be wrong, but I'm sure there was where it's just him slowly walking through the town and, like, the town's on fire, everybody's screaming, you know, they're running away, panicked, and he walks over to this dragon that's just standing there, and the dragon roars, and then it cuts the black, and it's like, gee, it gives you chills. I mean, I'm even getting chills, like, talking about it. <laughs> it's like... Oh, I need to go check that one out, actually. Oh, Maybe it's been because I've seen it. Ma- it sounds awesome, though. I, I can't even remember. I'm sure it sounds like it's a legit I've just one. typed in, and you're right, there, it yeah. is a live action trailer. It's a live trailer. action, I've yeah. I, I, I've yeah. just typed in live action trailer, so yeah, I need to go watch it actually after this. Yeah, it sounds is, awesome. It is really cool, and that is the kind of thing that like endears you to the hype of it. Yeah. That, yeah, it, it's because of that hype. And I, I would actually say that it's because of the hype that I caught the attention of it, or sorry, vice versa, it caught my attention, and I've been a fan of Skyrim ever since, and it actually makes me think that we should really do an episode on it sometime. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, re- I'm replaying Skyrim right now, oh, uh, yeah. ten, ten, a decade later. I love it. It's it's that game that I think if, like, you know, if I was forced to, like, only play mm-hmm. one game for the rest of my life, I would pick Skyrim. I love it. Which, I feel bad, because that kind of brings us on to our second game that we chose, <laughs> which is not as widely regarded well it is nowadays on the up now yeah it's on the up now but on release it was kind of like a bit of an omni shambles and i feel bad for it because i feel as if they were actually trying to make like a good experience yeah so i introduced skyrim so i'm gonna let you introduce this one so this is a game that has not lived up to the hype but has recovered from that so Yeah. yeah sorry over to you Nope, so this this one is No Man's Sky uh, by Hello Games, which was announced first announced back in 2013 and eventually released in June of 2016. Oh, sorry, no, August of 2016, actually. Mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah, and this game had, I, I want to say maybe, 
maybe with the exception of Cyberpunk, mm -hmm. the biggest amount of hype I, I think surrounding a game that I can think of. Because I, I remember this one vividly. I remember, you know, as it was get, you know, as it was being announced and people were going mm -hmm. crazy about like the things they thought they could do in this game and the world and like everybody was hailing it as probably it was gonna be the best game like of you know of this generation, yeah. maybe of all time. Another one again that um I think its first kind of proper trailer was at E3 in 2014. Mm -hmm. And that that was another very well received. It was a gameplay trailer, John. Well, people were absolutely loving it and losing their minds over it. Um, and the fact that it was supposed to be this, like you know, this is random planet that they'd happened to that they'd happened to stumble on for this trailer, and everyone's like, oh my god, look at like all the wildlife and all the things going on, and you know, all the things you can do. Turned out that that was actually a scripted planet. <laughs> they didn't oh, say that. That yeah. was one they specifically designed for the trailer. Yeah. But they didn't didn't say that at the time. But yeah, I mean, I think just an example of the hype really is the fact that so it was originally meant to be released in june 2016 mm -hmm. but it got delayed by two months and then the so the the head of hello games was sean murray who was like all over like his face was everywhere you know when it came to promoting the game and everything and he was he was really the pr man for mm -hmm. it so when when it was delayed by two months he got death threats from people because people were so hyped by this game mm -hmm. you know and then on his day on the day it was released apparently there was like three quarters of a million purchases on steam alone just for like the amount of people buying this game, pre-orders were through the roof, and then yeah, it, it came out. And for most people, it it was a I think a massive, massive disappointment compared to the expectations that they'd built up mm -hmm. built up for it. So it is weird because I feel like Hello Games is kind of it's like the middle ground. I mean, both obviously in this like discussion, but also in the sense that you've got like Skyrim and Bethesda, which is like a huge company, and Hello Games, which is it was still an indie company. But yeah, it wasn't really. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it wasn't depending on like Kickstarter or anything, was it? No, 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 it wasn't yeah. at all. Like it was, they they were for 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 the most of their run, mm -hmm. they were like scraping by. Like you know, the staff were like relying on savings. They got an injection of cash from from Sony because mm -hmm. so when Sony saw like the kind of hype that was getting behind the game. They they partnered up with them and that gave them an injection of cash. They were able to rely on that. They didn't have to like go to Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. That, but I think again, that actually, like, as good as it was to get that money, I think that actually made the problem worse in, in terms yeah. of the hype Probably. having that because Sony were, were really keen to push it and then you know mm -hmm. brought all this extra publicity. And as well, just you talking about them being an indie, indie studio, like, it was a team that it was a team that never exceeded 15 people yeah. working on this game. And compare that to Skyrim's team was around a hundred, yeah. and like Skyrim's a big game, but you know the, the whole the whole the big selling point of No Man's Sky was it was this procedurally generated universe with what was it like eighteen quintillion different planets that you could potentially you know you could potentially come across as you were journeying to the center of the universe, mm -hmm. and the scale of that is beyond like I, I, you know I can't even I can't imagine a quintillion <laughs> anything <laughs> quintillion of anything you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just to scale, but to have like only fifteen people at its max working on it, you know, it's it's um, it's to be honest, people should be glad that the game like the game worked for most people. I mean, I okay, it had a lot of problems with people game breaking stuff when it would get up, but people should be glad it didn't just like set their computers on fire. To be uh, honest, with the Playstations when it when it came out. Well, I mean that is true. Yeah, it's. I mean, it came out for quite a lot, didn't it? It came out for the PlayStation Four, like first and foremost. Yeah, I think and they came out PC at the same time. I can't remember. I remember. I think it did. Yeah, I think. Oh, it did because. It, sorry, I just, I, I no. just gave the, the Steam purchases stats, so it did come out on PC yeah. as well. Those two, and then it came out on Xbox later on. Because I'm just thinking, like, I think so. Like before it came out, there was like a leaked copy. So oh, they yeah. had like the physical copies, which sorry, I'm kind of laughing because the next game we're going to get onto like physical copies and how not to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, they had like physical copies and I think one of the shops or like distributors broke the embargo yeah. and they gave it out and someone put it up on eBay and they sold it for like ridiculous money for a video game. $1, that $1, was $1,200 I think. Ah, I it was that. something, yeah. It was ridiculous ridiculous amount of money you were just like how why would you pay for something that's i mean i suppose it's the exclusive there was a hype behind that. it yeah it shows the absolutely <laughs> hype that every, like people were feeling for this game i mean it's just maybe it's just me being innately scottish but you know i can't imagine paying more than like well nowadays 60 i suppose is my limit but <laughs> even 60 yeah. i'm still, even I 60 yeah to pay that much for a game now 
yeah, even 16, my fist kind of tightens ever so slightly, and I'm like, no, don't do it, don't do it, you don't you don't want to do this, you don't want to buy this game. It's like, I want to buy it? No, you don't want to buy it. But yeah, for this game, as you said, because of that hype, everybody was buying, half buying, but buying into it. And it is, it's just, it is astounding. Because going back to what I was saying earlier, like, as far as I remember, I know Sean Murray, isn't it? The guy yeah. who is the head of um, Hollow Games, he was like doing the press circuits and things for this. Yeah. But I mean, between that and the word of mouth on the internet, because that is a hell of a thing. If you get like yeah. famous on the internet, that's it. And it uh, runs away from you. Like, especially for a game like this that wasn't really seen before. Yeah. I mean, it was. I think that was the selling point that they just thought, well, this is going to be a game that's going to be like nothing you've ever played. And yeah, and then it turned out it was like something you played. Mainly. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, mainly a Bethesda game that was, didn't live up to the hype before. You know, Bethesda yeah. actually done that with Fallout 76 and Fallout 4. <laughs> but, you know, it's a very, very boring yeah. game. On, on release it seemed to be yeah. um, I, I think that was the, that was the problem that was the big problem mm. with being tied into Sony is that not yeah. only then were so, Sony were obviously like hyping this to the moon mm-hmm. and for, and with it being a small studio the reason that the, the Sean Murray like the, the head had to go and do all this they didn't have a PR department you know they mm-hmm. had 15 people who all yeah. had to work on developing this game yeah. you know so that's why Sean Murray had to do this mm-hmm. um, and to be honest like I feel like I, I feel like my opinion of Sean Murray has so much changed because I remember when he was when he was like making all the promises, you know, the, the first mm-hmm. time, like when when it happened and everything, and then it came out and it revealed that all these features were missing, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I remember being like, I remember being what the people were like, oh god, well he's such a liar, and I was like, oh god, you know, he's just hyping his game up for for money and mm-hmm. stuff, and knowing he's lying. But the more I've read about him, the more I've heard about him, like I'm just like, God, I feel so sorry for him, and it's like. <laughs> just this this guy like I feel like a, a kind. I was saying to you before this stream yeah. I feel like I, almost like a kindred spirit as yeah. a as a as a fellow introvert myself. Just like this person just being thrust, and I can imagine me as well being thrust onto this like public stage, and you know like and mm-hmm. just like how do you handle this when you have no PR training? You know that's what these big studios have. They have their they have their public mm-hmm. relations you know departments and their marketing departments mm-hmm. for this very reason. But this guy had to like you know deal with all this, and you know I, I can just see how it went mm-hmm. away. And then he would say one thing. And then the media and then the media machine would just spin it out and then you know it's like oh confirmed you know there's going to be base building there's mm-hmm. going to be you know multiplayer there's going to be big space mm-hmm. battles and just these these things just went out of control and mm-hmm. you know being tied into sony as well they had they got stuck in a very kind of tight development window so you mm-hmm. know it got to that point where they they realized like god we can't we can't you know put all this stuff in for release mm-hmm. but you know stuck with sony they could only get about a two-month delay well if they'd been on their own they could have delayed it longer and actually you know put the stuff in but you know that's the the deal with the devil i suppose you have to make i mean no how many times have like we done that before whether it's like school or university or even work or something you know like yeah. back in the day <laughs> and it's like you know like someone says oh can you do this this and that and you're like not a problem can do it. yeah can do it can do that because i mean i've done that in work you know i've been like oh can you do this or that i'm like no problem that's fine I, absolutely in my remit and then you actually go back and research it, and you're like, actually, that was all lies. Oh no, I've a no man's sky myself. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> so it's like I've hyped it again. I've hyped it up in my own right, saying that nah, it's fine. And then you know you actually look into it. But I can imagine though that the pressure is, or rather, it would have been like really difficult for a studio like yeah. that. Because I mean, if you think about it like going back to what you were saying it's just the spotlight was on that company you know and they could have yeah. easily like you've seen so many people like just take the money and be like well we try even bigger companies have done that yep for a lot of games and it's only after like a huge backlash that they kind of backtrack and be like oh no sorry jk lol if you think of battlefront 2 by ea where they had the loot boxes and they were like determined they were going to push that and because of like such a big backlash, they had to remove it. But it's like a lot of gaming companies kind of feel like, like the bigger ones, I mean, yeah. they'll go ahead with something and kind of think, oh, we are just going to do it anyway. And Looking at you, uh, Gearbox Studios. Oh, God. <laughs> with, your, with your litany of <laughs> examples of this. <laughs> I mean, what, what was their recent one? Well, they've had they've had Duke Nukem Forever was one of oh, theirs. Of they had Alien Colonial, Aliens Colonial Marines was another one. Yeah. Uh, Battleborn. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's another one that I'm yeah. forgetting, but they've they've had a, they've had a trail of these things that they've, these you know these turds they've dumped mm-hmm. out and just left to left to <laughs> smell up the smell of up course. the carpet. 
<laughs> I mean, Alien Colonial Marines is a great example, though. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was like... I remember watching a video on that, and it was just so fascinating. Because I thought it was just a case of they had a game to develop, they failed at it in the story, but just the amount of, like, issues that they came across, like, going back and forth, blaming Sega and vice versa, and, you know, getting split off to make another game. I think it was Borderlands, actually. They got, Yeah, it was Borderlands. Yeah, and, yeah, it was just all over the place, wasn't it? It's, yeah. But, yeah, I, I do have some admiration, though, for Hello Games. They could have easily gone down that route and just said, oh, it's a terrible game, let's slap, like, a half-assed multiplayer onto it. But, no, they yeah. actually put in the work, they put in more features, and even after, and this is the thing that I was actually quite inspired by, even after the studio flooded, uh, I thought that was amazing, that somehow, even, because I can't remember when it was, but it was like sometime anyway, the yearly flooding of Down South, and yeah, their studio just got completely wrecked, and even after that, and all that hardship, they still came back to the game. Like, I mean, the the thing that actually I thought was quite a shame was when they got invited for, a, I think it was an award ceremony, and they won. I can't remember what it was for, but they won. Most innovative game or something, something like that, like I think. That. Was, but yeah. they never showed up to the first one yeah. because they didn't think, or they, they didn't believe in themselves. They didn't think, oh, we're going to win. And then all of a sudden, like, as soon as they found out, they were like, <laughs> whoops. So, um, just brought them to avoid the spotlight at that point, you know, for the shellacking they were they, they were taking. Yeah. Um, but as you say, like, their commitment to this game is, is, I totally agree, is so admirable. In fact, the most recent update was February this year. Like, they've, they've been mm-hmm. continually pumping these updates out. And the game now is, you know, has basically, I think, nearly everything that people expected would be in the finished game, like mm-hmm. the game on release. So oh, yeah. their commitment to it, and I think I think a lot of that stems from you know this this was like Hello Games like baby you know this was an idea they generated and they came up with and they they were really passionate about and mm-hmm. I think that's part of the reason why they were so you know why they why they wanted to keep you know mm-hmm. why they wanted to keep improving it and you know and and mm-hmm. like redeem themselves and everything I I, I compare it to something like Anthem. Um, which was like another one of these games that was very hyped at the time and then like came out and was an utter bomb and that from what i understand now has just died away and that was yeah. made by that was made by bioware and you know people love bioware people love the mass effect series and they were mm-hmm. people were really excited for like their new kind of science fiction ip um and it turned out to be just like a, a really poor destiny clone mm-hmm. you know filled with stuff and it just wasn't a bioware game at all and i just can't imagine that you know maybe there are people at bioware who were passionate about it but i just can't imagine because it just seems so different from what Bioware traditionally make, mm-hmm. you know, that I just like I, I can see people has been like, oh, like who has the passion to actually like devote time to make this game better yeah. and improve it? Well, at least with Hello Games, this was their this was their baby, yeah. you know. Because I mean, before that, I think it was like I mean, obviously it was indie games, but I can't remember what it was. It Joe Danger or something like that. Joe Danger was their thing before, yeah. yeah. And it was like a kind of racing, or not racing, but it was like the a stunt kind of game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like that kind of um, game. So it wasn't like I mean, it was popular enough, but it wasn't exactly. It wasn't eighteen them in a quadrillion planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and it is. It's amazing how they went from just nothing to yeah, both infamy and success at the same time or not the same time but just like one after the other which is admirable um which then kind of will get shot down (laughs) in a minute (laughs) because you know we've gone from a game that has lived up to the hype with skyrim we have gone with a game that didn't live up to the hype but then got better afterwards and yeah, I'm going to let you... <laughs> I'm going to let you oh, with us one. So, yeah, the third game we're going to talk about is Mighty Number 9. So where do we start with us? Now, yeah. this was probably one of these ones that I was... It was a car crash that I was absolutely loved watching. And oh, somebody yeah. who has... Somebody who, who's never played a Mega Man game and, like, no, did not really... I'm not really a big one for platformers and stuff, so mm-hmm. I didn't have really any investment. And just this one was just... A macabre delight to watch it <laughs> implode. <laughs> anyway, yeah. sorry. So yeah, so Mighty Number no. Nine was a game that was inspired by the Mega Man series and was actually made by the man, one of the kind of leading designers behind Mega Man, um, Ken. Mm-hmm. Oh god, I'm gonna say his name wrong, but Kenji Inafune, I think. Mm-hmm. Is, sorry, a problem. Uh, apologies if I've like absolutely mangled that pronunciation. But yeah, so it was first announced in 2013. 
um, as well. And this, this was a Kickstarter project. Um, and this became the sixth most funded project in Kickstarter history as people lost their minds over this. It raised $900,000 $900, in two days. Mm-hmm. And it then got an eventual total of $4 million. And just to be honest, reading about this was fascinating because so not only were they going to make this game, but then there were plans for a movie. There was going to be an anime series. There was going to be manga. They were already planning like the sequels to the video game. And as I say, like it was, it was Mega Man inspired in that same kind of challenging platforming action. Yeah. Um, you know, with like and it's same. I think he he almost looks like um he almost looks like a kind of copy of Mega Man, and there's the kind of boss robot bosses at the end of each stage and everything. Yeah. So very much in that vein, and because Mega Man had kind of died away by that point, um, I think there've been games subsequently, but like you know, in the kind of early 2010s. Mega Man wasn't a franchise around, but people really had a lot of fondness for it still, as this really caught a lot of people's people's like enthusiasm and you know love for the series. Mm-hmm. Uh, before I move on, can I just talk about the Kickstarter rewards? Oh, some of them they're on yeah. this absolutely fantastic. So some of them, like obviously, you know, mm-hmm. Kickstarter, the more money you donate, you know, the, the, sometimes come uh, people will, like give special prizes and stuff if you donate a certain amount of money. So there's ones like you, you could get your face put in the game. There was one where you could help design a boss. And things like that that were like you mm-hmm. were like really good for like fans and stuff. People would be really enthused by the one that cracks me up though is the highest level one. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if you were to donate ten thousand dollars to Mighty Number no. Nine, you got to have dinner with with Kenji Inafune <laughs> in Tokyo. Now it specifically said travel and lodgings were not included in this total, so you'd have to pay your own way there <laughs> and find your own accommodation. So God knows how much that would cost. Yeah. Also, as well, what I love is Inafune. Inafune doesn't speak English, and I don't know if he speaks <laughs> any other language yeah. other than other than Japanese. So you you mm-hmm. probably like to have a translator there for the whole dinner. It never mm-hmm. actually stated where you're going to have dinner, so you may have gone to Tokyo to go get some chicken nuggets. To be honest, at that point, <laughs> <laughs> ten thousand well, dollars right. plus your travel and your lodgings. And I was like, my God! Like I could see all the others makes, and perhaps if you're like, such a big fan of Mega Man, perhaps that was like a you would absolutely love the chance to meet yeah. one of the leading people behind it. But to me, I'm like, that. I don't know. It's just, it's too fraught that one with like, I don't know, embarrassment and, and everything yeah. for me. But I just had to laugh reason looking at that. I mean, there's a lot of logistics to consider for something that exactly. should be an award. You know, it's <laughs> like, it's like, imagine if you, you know, you paid like enough money to get like a free cream egg. And then they were yeah. like, oh, by the way, we've hidden it somewhere in Edinburgh. Go find it, you know. We're not uh, paying you travel there, by the way. Yeah, we're not paying. You have to pay yourself, and it's like it's probably not worth it. <laughs> it's like I like cream eggs, but maybe not enough to <laughs> to travel all the way to there. And it's yeah, it's surreal, isn't it? It's just a surreal. It it really was. Do, do you know what? Like we joked about Skyrim, and we still joke mm-hmm. about Skyrim being ported to everything. Yeah. But, like the amount of platforms that this game was going to be put onto, it was gonna. So it was gonna be. It was gonna be developed for the three DS. The Wii U, the Xbox One, the Xbox 360, the PS3, the PS4, PS Vita, PC, Mac, and Linux. Mm-hmm. All these things it was going to come out on. I mean, eventually, it came out on a select few consoles and, and systems when it, was, when it came out in... It was 2016 again, but I've actually... Sorry, yeah. I've honestly forgotten when it was in 2016. Mm-hmm. But it came out for a f- select few systems. Then it arrived on things like the 360, I think the PS3, a few months afterwards. It never ended up arriving on, on like the handheld consoles like the Vita or the, or the 3DS. Yeah. It just gave up on that. Even though like that had been what, a funding promise. You know, If they reached a certain amount of money, they were going to release it on those platforms and just like i was looking through like um the funding totals and stuff and just the promises they were making like so it was just like oh, we're gonna add we're gonna add more stages we're gonna add more bosses we're gonna add more modes you know we're gonna have <laughs> yeah. all these different system versions if we make this money and just the scale of this thing just seemed to be going like out of control yeah. and as i said like at the same time they were trying to like get money from anime and manga and everything and also as well like they were at the same time they were kickstarting other projects as well there was obviously the anime series there was another game called red ash which was another kickstarter project that they were trying to do at the same time and then inafune was also working on that game Recore, which came out on like xbox Mm -hmm. one a few years back it wasn't very well received either so just like the attention was split everywhere and you know and that's kept asking for more money from the funders and everything and it just they got it as well but like oh i just the scale of this thing just seems to be getting out of hand uh, it's a weird one it's <laughs> it's like you're kind of thinking what were they thinking 
in terms of just the entire scale. As you said, the entire yeah. scale of it and wanting it in every single console because I'm sorry, like I, I don't imagine any child saying, do you know what I really want from a Wii U? Which in itself is a sentence that would never exist. <laughs> but do you know what I want for my Wii U? I want Mighty Number no. 9. Like, because that's what people were saying. They were outraged that they paid, like, four, or sorry, they ended up getting 4 million. I was actually laughing because I was, uh, when I was researching this, I was watching a trailer for that same animated series. And it's basically the stereotypical, oh, look at, you know, this bumbling you know, protagonist and all of this rubbish and things like that. I was like, oh no, here we go. Yeah, it was like something put in the um, YouTube comments, we paid four million for this. Oh my god. <laughs> and I mean, like, when you think about it, the amount it must cost to have to produce this to, you know, like, to produce this to other consoles. Yeah. And things like that. And it's like you have to cut your losses because I think it came out during that transitional period where everyone was going from the Xbox 360 to, well, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 to the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. So it was like they wanted the best of both worlds, but at the same time, they wanted it out on the 360 and the uh, yeah. PlayStation 3 because that's the consoles that were. You know, they were still prevalent. Because, yeah. I mean, it's like, even now, like, not many people have... I mean, technically they do, but there, there's a whole, like, issue behind that where people have got, like, they've still got their Xbox Ones and their PlayStation 4s. Because even though we move on to the next generation, you're still going to have, like, people who are stuck in the last generation for the first yeah. kind of year or the first life cycle. So them stretching their self definite, definitely didn't help, like, at all. And oh, yeah. there's just two things I want to bring up about this game which I found hilarious. The first one was their marketing. Have you <laughs> heard their tagline? Oh yeah, is this the one in the advert? Yeah, the anime <laughs> one. Yeah, so usually when you get like one of these games, you know, like let's say Duke Nukem or a game that's trying to be hip and cool and look at us, we're the good guys and all of this. And their tagline, I shit you not, was... Make, make the bad make guys cry crack. like an anime fan on prom night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. What a slap in the face to your audience. I mean, oh yeah, my God. Yeah, it's like, if people were fans of Mega Man, chances are there might be an overlap in people who are anime fans. You're it, making an anime for this game as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it does. It seems like a backhanded compliment. Like, give me the money. Now get the hell away and go cry, you nerd. It's like, you nerd, go cry into your manga. Yeah, like, can you imagine them saying that for, like, you know, Call of Duty or Fortnite or, like, God forbid, Halo? Being like, I know. <laughs> be like, you would cry worse than, I don't know, like, you would cry you worse. cry into your pack of Doritos or whatever. Yeah, like. yeah cry worse than a Dorito-driven madman. <laughs> or a Mountain Dew deviant, you know, it's like, you're... No, <laughs> it was stupid. It was absolutely stupid. But I think what was even worse, and I think you told me about this ages ago, but apparently one of the uh, rewards for the Kickstarter was a... So basically before this game, I think this game got funding, didn't it, from Deep Silver? It, like, yes, eventually. I think it did, it did after the after the Kickstarter like yeah. exploded, basically. It was so popular. De yeah, you say mm -hmm. Deep Silver, the publisher, got involved and just help yeah. the promotion with it. And I think that was the reason why they got physical copies. Yeah. But before that, oh boy, before that, one of the um, Kickstarter, not promotion, one of the Kickstarter rewards was that you could get a copy of the game, but because it was all digital, it was like, what they did was they made up these boxes that were like the old NES boxes, like what they used to do with Mega Man. But they didn't have a physical game inside, so they just had a code inside of it. And they also had like a manual. They printed the manual too big, so it wouldn't even fit inside the box. <laughs> so you had a oh, man oh so you had a manual that was too big. You had a box with nothing but a code in it, and then. <laughs> And then when Deep Silver got involved, you know, and they said, oh, we're bringing out a physical copy, and people were like, oh, do we, are we eligible for this because they put so much money into it? And they were like, no, no, you're not. <laughs> it's like, no, what are you doing? 
Do you know yeah. what's even funnier? Like, so you got your digital code right, okay? You got uh-huh. your digital code in your box, in your pointless box with a manual that didn't fit, like the manual that was just too big for it. And then the digital code didn't even work for some people. What's <laughs> it for no? lots of the backers? No, it didn't work. Oh, they my couldn't God. get the game to work at all. And then oh. if you did get it to work, mm-hmm. there were so many game. I mean, talk about Skyrim or something. This was like, I think, getting to Fallout 76 levels of game breaking bugs. The graphics were downgraded from what the trailers originally showed. The graphics were downgraded to the point that it, people were comparing the explosions. Apparently, it looked like cheap pizza. So <laughs> bad and everything. It was just, it was just a cacophony of just the, the voice acting was terrible. Uh. The level design was dull. Just everything about it just went wrong. And then uh, there was one quote I saw. So, like, uh, in, in, in his defense, Inafune kind of came in and really apologized for, like, the, mm-hmm. the absolute shoddy state of it. Um, but his translator had an absolute peach of a quote as well mm-hmm. um, afterwards. So he responded to the criticism. And he was talking, and he, he was also kind of apologizing as well, but he, he was basically, he basically said that, like, he said, well, I'm not getting my 2D uh, side-scrolling fill, and at the end of the day, even if it's not perfect, it's better than nothing. Just like, oh, oh my god, have some, have a bit of, like, tomato ketchup on your, on your shit sandwich. <laughs> like, you know, it's better than nothing, because you're not getting any Mega Man, and it's like, oh Yeah, god. and then a couple of years later, it became irrelevant, because Capcom yeah. did, like, bring out Mega Man like 11 I think it was and it was yeah. like oh, just it, there was a whole it just it's like a spiral of like just complete and utter mistakes mismanagement just everything like you watch the videos and they're yeah. all saying the same thing that it's just like there wasn't any great communication there wasn't any like I mean even some stores when people were asking about it were like we've got no idea what's going on because the game company <laughs> hasn't told us what's going on yeah. with this game so it's like I, I, I don't know it almost feels a bit brash to think it got that... delayed as well like yeah. that's the thing as well this game got delayed for like for over a, for about a year it was meant Jesus. to be spring 2015 mm. it was supposed to come out it got delayed until june 2016 and this was the state of it in a year mm. like yeah. at least no like no man's sky like they had two months okay so fair enough mm. they, they, was, that's not a lot of time to like correct things this had a year and it was still an absolute train wreck jesus that is far too long to sit on the game like that. Do you want, speaking of too long, do you want one final fun fact about this game? Oh, do tell. Do tell. So th- this this absolutely blew my mind, but okay, mm. so the credit sequence for Mighty Number no. 9 is apparently about 3 hours and 48 minutes long. Wait, because, what? yeah, so the credits take 3 hours and 48 minutes if you sit and watch them all, because they decided to include nearly 68,000 Kickstarter backers in it, so you have to scroll through all these names. Now, this is apparently the longest credit sequence in any type of media ever. You're and joking. I was just like, There's... you could no, really? you could probably watch an extended version of Lord of the Rings in a shorter time than it would take to watch the Mighty Number no. Nine credits. Oh Jesus! Like I, I can, I get like the idea of it. I mean, do, do games like not have? You know how you get like a gallery section. And some yeah. games are like a kind of bonus um, part of yeah. it. Yeah. Would it not make more sense to put the credits there, maybe? <laughs> or the names I there? Don't, you know? I don't just, know, but. I, wow. I actually did not know that. That is absolutely. I, did, I found that out for it. I was like, that is. What, that is what a way to end. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that is just ridiculous. Um, I'm not sitting through. No offense to them, but I'm not sitting through three and a half hours of credits. <laughs> you, you could play. God knows. You could play anything in that time. You could play Skyrim, you could play No Man's Sky, you can play God, you could probably fix Cyberpunk in that time. But you, you could do yeah. <laughs> You could do anything that's more fulfilling. I, I can think of like about a quintillion things that are more fulfilling than, than playing or watching the Mighty Number no. Nine credit sequence. That's just ridiculous. Um that, that has actually left me speechless. I can't believe that. <laughs> I cannot believe that they would have three and a half hours. And th- see, this is the thing I was talking about earlier. This idea of basing hype on nostalgia and goodwill. Because this is what I was saying with like games like Ukulele and things, where they say, this is a spiritual successor to, you know, XYZ. And it's that idea of you're going to get a gamble. Like, as you said, with that Castlevania successor, that, that was great, that worked out for the best. Whereas, if you look at Mighty Number no. 9, you know, they, they had all the building blocks there because there wasn't, at the time anyway, there wasn't a Mega Man game out. 
So yeah, yeah, that there, there wasn't anything challenging them. If you know what I mean, it was like the only thing that was challenging them was their own nostalgia, and yeah, they just they, <laughs> they messed it up, and I don't know how on every level as well. Oh, like, yeah. I don't know if anything about this game went right. No, I, I don't think so. And I mean, th- th- there was just so much controversy with everything. I mean, there's like tons more that we could go into detail about, but I mean, where do we even begin? Like. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we I mean, we could have a we could probably have an episode as long as the credit sequence discussing the, discussing the saga of this game. I mean, probably. I mean, between that and there was the whole was there not like a thing to do with Gamergate as well, based on this? Oh, was there? Apparently so. <gasps> oh, it was, was something... it something to do with like the one of the side character and the supporting characters or something? I think so. It was either that or it was like someone who was like a. a consultant artist I think she was or something like that Yeah, and I, I can't remember if it was she drew a side character or she drew Mighty Number no. 9 or whatever his name, I think his name's actually Beck, which I actually didn't know until I looked it up there Beck <laughs> Call, isn't it? Or yeah, Beck like Call people. yeah, it's like instead of Mega Man which is apparently Rock and Roll, I think Yeah, I think that's their thing but yeah, yeah yeah, Beck and Call was a really weird, like, pun name. It's like, imagine if we were in a game and we were called, like, Chips and Cheese. You know, it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, like... That's uh, better than Beck and Call, I think. Probably, yeah. At least it makes me think, you know what? This is bad, but I can go get some Chips and Cheese. <laughs> Just wash away the taste of this poor game. Yeah, there was something to do with that. Um, I, I don't know if she, like, drew, like, a gender-bent version of the character, or... I, I don't know. Like, something happened anyway. And... Yeah, it was just a bit weird, the kind of fallout with that, you know, it was a whole gamer gate and, you know, the whole, like, infighting there and just, yeah, it came out at a time that I think just absolutely destroyed it. I think the kind of landscape of gaming at the time just, like, because it was, as as I've said before, it was changing between one generation to the next and, yeah, it didn't help that they were just messing up at every possible turn. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, booking dinner reservations with that four million. Because <laughs> I can't remember what someone oh said. God. But they basically said, like, you know, they ended up getting four million. And someone did some calculations, like a kind of rough calculation. And I don't know what they accounted for. I think it was probably, like, paying staff and, you know, like, exporting the game to other things. But that still left them with, like, 2.4 million. So yeah. it's like, what was it going into? <laughs> Because I think, just kind of quickly before we wrap up, but like, was it not that they had the money there, but then they had to do a second Kickstarter or a third one to get the voice actors? Oh God, that was up? it. Yeah, yeah, that was that was <laughs> one of the things. Of course, you're right. Yeah, they they had another one. Like, oh, we're gonna need voice acting. You know, yeah. it's like, oh God, they just kept asking for more. They really did. They kept biting the hand that was feeding them, and it was like yeah. there was no real management there, was there? No, it just, I uh, yeah, I think that's one of the big things we will level against this. It was just such mm-hmm. a, it was so badly mismanaged mm-hmm. on every level. Um, I think the company's called Concept or something was like the company behind this mm-hmm. game, and I think yeah, people just leveled the old <laughs> mismanagement accusation at them, which you know seems very fair. No wonder they did deserve it <laughs> in a way. I mean, again, as we said, we could go on about this, but it's just, it's, yeah, it's exactly what hype does to a game, you know, in the negative sense. So as we said, we have Skyrim, which of course is, and again, like, there's other examples of games. I mean, if I'm looking at my own personal, like, is there any personal experiences that you have of games where you were hyped for them? And either they lived up to the hype or not? Oh yeah, I can, I can definitely get one that didn't live up to the hype. Um, I was very, very excited for Call of Duty World War II oh, when it was announced. Course. It was coming out. I was really, I was really excited for it. Like I was really longing for the the return to that to the World War II setting, and I was really excited. I, it was one that it was the Call of Duty game that I actually pre-ordered, and that's mm-hmm. the first time I'd done that in ages. I think since like Modern Warfare Three. Mm-hmm. Um, was when I pre-ordered and I, I think I remember I don't know if you remember this but I'm sure I remember like when I got it and it arrived I'm sure I remember like taking a picture of it and sending sending like yeah. a I think I think it was a Snapchat but you know it was like yeah, a yeah. Facebook message or whatever mm-hmm. like I think I sent it to you and so people just being like please be good <laughs> please be good <laughs> and then it's not a bad it's not a bad game it's yeah. just it's just disappointing I, I was disappointed by by what it was games living up to the hype I mean I remember GTA 5 
being, you know, like the hype around that and the fact that that started with like four pictures, like they released like oh, four yeah. screenshots. Mm-hmm. Everybody lost their mind, you know, over that. And I remember that being really excited for that. And that was one that totally lived up to the hype. I think as like most Rockstar, most Rockstar games like post GTA 3 have, have had huge hype trains, but they've kind of always delivered. Mm-hmm. You know, again, a company that has a lot of experience with that. But yeah, like, apart from those, those are the two examples that stand in my mind. What about yourself? Well, I would say GTA as well, because that was one of the games that, like, I, I wasn't really into. Because I think I've touched on this in past episodes, but as I said, like, my parents didn't let me play, like, games that were above my like age so like if it was a yeah. 15 game and i was only 14 they were like well i think they would maybe like they would think about it depending on what kind of game it was but you know it's like if i was like 15 and i wanted to play uh, gta they'd be like no absolutely not because it's an 18 yeah but like so i got into the series kind of a bit later on but i remember playing five and everyone going nuts about it and i was like okay okay i'll i'll try it and then yeah just absolutely loved five I mean, like, nowadays it's kind of a bit, like, stale. But, I mean, that that's yeah. the same for any game that's kind of overhyped and then it just keeps going. Another one, of course, being... I mean, The Witcher I haven't completed, but from what I played of it, I can understand why people liked it. Yeah. Uh, going back to an example of one that failed for the hype, surprise, surprise, Sonic 06. Because, and this is a confession time, that was, like, one of the reasons I really wanted to buy, like, a PlayStation 3. Uh, <laughs> bad oh, choice on well. my part. No, it was because back then I remember like going through playing, you know, like Sonic Adventure, and then I think the last game before they switched over to the next gen was uh, Shadow the Hedgehog. Which, oh, really? Yeah, which was a weird game because it was meant to be like this gritty kind of not a reboot, but like a gritty story but they use the same plasticky models as they did for Sonic Heroes which are a lot more bright and bubbly and <laughs> yeah just uh, both of them were just a mess. I think Sonic Heroes is a bit better but I wasn't a fan of it personally up until that point it was like that was the tone they were going for because Sonic Adventure, I was an edgy teenager, what can I say? <laughs> or an edgy child where it was like Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 like had semi-serious stories mm-hmm. Considering the world it's in, because, you know, it's still a cartoon yeah. hedgehog, but it, it was really good. When they said that they were going to go for a more realistic look to it, like, I was hyped, because I remember I had, um, like, dial-up internet at the time, that's how long ago it was, and I remember, like, trying to download this video for Sonic 06, <laughs> and it took ages, because you know what oh, it's shit. like with, um, yeah. with like, dial-up internet, it just took absolutely ages to <laughs> download this video, and it was literally just a video of Sonic standing there, and I think it was like Kingdom Valley, the level's called, it's like the one where it's all these floating platforms and things, and it looked amazing, because back then, obviously, those kind of graphics were, yeah. you know, fantastic, and that was a game I was really hyped about, and then I started hearing bad things, but I was like, oh no, it's probably just people who don't like Sonic, and then you actually yeah. play the game, and Jesus, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this this doesn't live up to the hype. I mean, yeah, that, that is, I think that was a game that was supposed to kind of revolutionise Sonic, like, back into, you know, the next gen, rebuild his popularity, oh, and then it just became, like, a Final Fantasy game with Sonic. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, they made it... See, that's the thing about a game like Sonic, or it's like, you know when you see the Unreal mods for games? Yeah. And it's like, oh, look, it's Mario running beside realistic deer, or something like that. <laughs> that looks really weird, because those two art styles clash. And it's the same yeah. with Sonic 06, it's like, all you saw was the level design, and it's like, oh, that's cool. But then you see them beside, like, regular humans, and it's like, this isn't, no, this is weird. This is far too weird. Um, but... Yeah, that, that was a kind of turning point for me. The other one, I suppose, would be Empire Total War. Oh, um, yeah. Because I absolutely loved Medieval 2 Total War. I think it's one of my favourite um, strategy games of all time. I mean, you, you would you consider it a strategy game? Hey, oh, yeah, definitely. It's real-time strategy. Real-time I mean, strategy. No doubt, yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which um, is a type of strategy game, so yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I absolutely love that game, and I, th- I think we both we both kind of share that passion 
for that series. Yeah. Up until, up until a certain point. <laughs> because I remember with Empire Total War hearing that, oh, it's, it's, instead of like focusing on Europe and the Middle East and like over the hell that part of Russia was and that part, you know. <laughs> And the tiny bit of America, it's like, oh, you can, like, explore the entire world and build up your empire, thus Empire uh, Total War. But, yeah, it, it was just, it was not my cup of tea. Like, if, if anybody yeah. else likes it, I'm not going to kind of, you know, go, oh, I can't believe you like it. But uh, for me personally, it just did not live up to the hype. And then I think games yeah. after that just, like, went further and further down, like Rome 2 for example. That was a game I was quite hyped for, and then I played it, and I just did not get into it, because of all the micromanaging, the, you know, the fact that a lot of the like, factions are behind a paywall and things, which they didn't reveal. Yeah, that was awful. Uh, And they're still doing that to this day, so it's like, what is the end game here? So... (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's, again, it's like banking on the nostalgia to hype it up and then just, yeah, just letting you down one last time. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Before we kind of finish up, is there any final thoughts you want to say about hype? I mean, I think what I take away from, from the discussion that we've had there is I think video game hype is incredibly dangerous. <laughs> I was trying to like weigh up the pros and cons of it and you know like I was like there, there are pros to it and I, I think hype after a game's release when it's been proven to be good you know is a good thing and can really help a game but I just think I think pre-release hype is just so it's just so thro- fraught with peril. Mm-hmm. I just I just think people get such unrealistic expectations of yeah. what things you know and that, that was like say the comparison between like Skyrim and and Mighty Number no. Nine and you know um, No Man's Sky. Everybody was like with No Man's Sky. Everybody was like, oh, we can't wait for this. Like you know, all these specific features that have apparently been promised, you know, and everything. And then just when these didn't show up, everybody just like was outraged and you know like yeah. sending more death threats to to Sean Murray and to Hello Games. Yeah. Um, you know, while as I said, as with Skyrim, it was you know much more about exploring the world and everything. I just think it's like you set yourself up for disappointment. To be honest, mm-hmm. like with with hype, I just think it's such a dangerous thing. And it does have pros, as I say, but yeah, just just reading about these games, I was like, you know, it's it's such a dangerous animal. It's definitely something that I, I feel as if it's something like the difference between like someone trying to sell you something legitimate and a car salesman. Yeah. If you know what I mean? Like, because you can get someone who's legitimately trying to sell you like a really good game or something and they're like, oh, check out this game. It's, you know, it's got this, it's got that, being very honest, very transparent. And then you've got the car salesman who's like, oh yeah, you can you can explore planets and do this and that. And it just reminds me, do you know what it reminds me of? You know those cheap mobile ads? Oh, the mobile yeah. games and it's oh, like God, yeah. it's like oh look at this like saucy scene or look at this gameplay and it's like yep. when you actually see the game in action it's like yeah this is this is just Candy Crush 2.0 isn't it because a lot of, and again that's like a whole other topic in itself but you know it's like building up something else and being like it's just like this game that you like or it's just that and you're like just chill <laughs> calm yeah, down yeah. be your own thing and yeah just yeah like i don't think hype is inherently a bad thing and people who buy into the hype i don't think they're inherently to blame but uh, yeah it's just that kind of caution that's needed isn't it yeah you, you just need to i think you need to be a bit realistic you know yeah. And be excited for a game. Like not, I'm not like saying not don't not be excited for games, you know, mm-hmm. and everything. But I think just be careful. <laughs> don't don't you know? It's not just with games. I think just with a lot of things in life. Don't don't set yourself up for a fall. You know, in yeah. in that way. Mm-hmm. You know, there there is something to be said for being just a, a tad cautious. Yeah, just be careful with the hype. That's all I'm saying. Very true. Otherwise, you've got a cyberpunk situation going on, yep. or even worse, a mighty number nine situation. Yep. Where you're stuck you in a rest- yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, where you're stuck in a restaurant with the, <laughs> the head of a company that you don't know. <laughs> with your game manual, it doesn't fit into your box. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, what, what a travesty. What an oh, absolute right. travesty. As always, Adam, thank you so much for coming on this hype train today. Well, thank you very much. I hope I lived up to the hype. Oh, no, definitely. Can't say the same for myself, but you know what? <laughs> Two sides oh. of the same coin. You know? <laughs> You're too harsh on yourself. Oh, no. I'm not harsh enough. <laughs> You're the glue that holds it all together. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hype me up. 
<laughs> so yeah, um, thank you all so so much for stopping by and listening. So yeah, you can see more of my content on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and of course Twitch under the name Satsunami42. If you want to listen to more episodes of the Chat Tsunami podcast, you can listen to us on Anchor, Spotify, and all good podcast distributors. And yeah, as always, stay safe, stay awesome, and most importantly, stay hydrated. Bye guys. Bye.